This podcast contains adult themes and language. The views expressed here are our own opinions and experiences. We are not medical professionals. In this podcast, we discuss our opinions about mental health, sobriety, addiction, and our pursuit of happiness and peace. This is Sober Mind. Oh, yeah. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Ooh, Judy, Judy's mic is coming in hot. Toast. Am I coming in hot? Sorry. <laughs> well. You, yeah, you want to keep that one up because that's the stream mix. Oh, over here. You could probably do there. Here. You know what? BRB, I need my notes. Okay. All right. Okay. Man. Uh, all right, Patrick, let's get our, let's pull ourselves together. Yep. Patrick and I ran eight miles this morning, uh, still in training, obviously, for our half marathon. And we are, we're doing good. Uh, yeah, I was happy to get back out there, you know, got my miles in this week, even though that a lot of them were walking. That's okay. I'm, I was very surprised with your, uh, your your ankle healing because it was looking like a big old purple swollen elephant's foot. Yeah, it's pretty nasty, pretty gnarly, still bruised yes. pretty well. So I'm glad your ankle's feeling better. Me too. It just taking care of it, you know. Um, I do from know from Judy's notes that we should probably do introductions. Yes, proper introductions. Yep. I was uh, I was I was going through my my notes here and uh, yeah. I got, we got a bunch of things going on. So hold on. I got to start and see, start this one, started the recording. I'm also going to do the local recordings on the roadcaster, Patrick. Why not? Okay. Good morning. My name is John. I'm Patrick. And I'm Judy. <laughs> and this is Sober Mind. Here we talk about uh, our journey with sobriety and mental health. And uh, we, we have adult conversations around all of that. So buckle up because it could be awesome <laughs> or it could just turn into a shit show we never know yep yeah but uh, both of them are so much fun yes <laughs> so what are we talking about today today we are going to talk about the art of listening and and we're are that... we going to do gratitude first yeah yes. absolutely i just would like to tee up the topic and yep. then we oh got it got it yeah yeah I like to see how it, we're, we're figuring it out. All three of us are trying to stay so organized. We're like, hey, what the fuck? <laughs> What's the next bullet point? Hold on. I'm going on my list. All right. I'll the, let you try. Yeah. The first thing I'd, I would like to, to, to say is, uh, all right, let's get some music going here in the background. We hear you squeaking your mic around, babe. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Patrick's got his alerts going on on his phone. See? Shit show in, in progress. <laughs> okay, well, uh, some quick housekeeping. What I wanted to do is let everyone know that, hey, we appreciate uh, all of the support that we've been getting. Look, I, it's time to have a, a moment of candidness here. We the, Doing all of this is not free at all. Uh, the, the main component that we pay a pretty be decent amount of money for is the podcast portion. So a lot of people listen to us on Spotify and Apple Music and anywhere where you can get your podcasts. Uh, the problem is that stuff costs money. So uh, I've talked to a bunch <laughs> of folks and I've looked at some stats and the people, there's a lot of people, hundreds that listen to the podcast, but uh, that's a money out situation. What we'd like to do is eventually get money in Let's be honest, uh, we enjoy what we do, but uh, <laughs> paying the bills would be nice because we're getting ready to build a studio down in the basement. It's going to be epic. Yes, I'm so excited for that. So where I'm going with that is if you are listening to this podcast, please go over to youtube.com forward slash at sober mind and subscribe. That's it. That's all you have to do. Pause your podcast. Go to youtube.com forward slash at sober mind and please subscribe and hit that like button. 
you know, we appreciate all, it. Yeah, we appreciate it. It, it, helps, it helps the channel grow. It helps us get to a stage to where we can continue to produce all of this good content. And, uh, hey, don't be selfish. Just go fucking <laughs> hit subscribe. Man, it's not so Dang. tough. I know. Thank, but thank Dang. you. Dang. <laughs> <clears throat> okay. Uh, yeah, let's do gratitude. Who's ready? Remember, uh, if you're new to the show, what we do is we start every show with uh, a moment of gratitude. I'll go. Start it off. Uh, again, I was uh, I was very happy when I woke up this morning to just be able to wake up healthy and get out of bed and go for that eight mile run. Full disclosure, I did try to sabotage myself again. I was like, oh man, I'm so tired. You know, Patrick's ankle sore still. I bet I if I just text him and say, hey, let's skip today, he'll be like, yeah, sure. But then I'd be like, that lazy son of a bitch. <laughs> John, get out of bed. I was like, what are you doing again? Trying to sabotage. But anyway, uh, I have a lot of gratitude for my my health and and happiness and just being able to pay the bills and, and take care of basic life, life expenditures. That's a good one. Judy. I am grateful for being able to go and visit my family. I have an aunt who is um, up in Michigan, uh, which is about 12 hours from here, and uh, she's 93. So it's nice to be able to, I'm grateful that I was able to go and visit her. But, you know, I don't get up there very often. So I wanted to um, visit her and her daughter, my cousin, Nancy and Aunt Valeria. And I just feel grateful that I had the opportunity to go and visit them uh, along with my other aunt and my cousins who are also up there, other side of the family. But, <laughs> but that being said, I just, I feel really grateful about being able to do that. Yeah. I'd be sober to do that too. <laughs> Patrick, what's your gratitude? Uh, I'm going to call Judy. I'm going to be grateful for Judy because last weekend, you know, like you had, you guys had done the show without me a couple times. And um, you mentioned about the dynamic changing. I definitely noticed it last week. And I'm thankful for. Without having Judy here? Yes. Yes. And I am just so thankful for the. You know, I really enjoy our dynamic together, you know, and you came back focused and you, you, you brought notes and, you know, kind of, uh, articulated how you felt like you wanted to invest in the, the show and the relationships and, and kind of grow that. And I, I really am thankful for, you know, kind of how you brought that forth and, and like a, you know, it's, it wasn't like, we need to come back and we need to do better. Or we do this like you were, <laughs> you, I mean, <laughs> you did it with open arms and I'm like, yeah, heck yeah, let's do this. I'm on board with it. And, and at the same time, you were definitely sorely missed last week. Oh, well, thank you. Yes. Well, thank you, Patrick. Uh, okay. Good morning, Michelle. Go oh, well, well, well. Look who has graced us with his presence. Odie. <laughs> All the way from Serbia, he has decided to take a break. Just a, pr a precious hour of his of his Baldur's from Gate three game. gameplay <laughs> to join us. You know what? You got to give him proper I know. because it like infected mm. through me. Now you're on to the Baldur's Gate three. Yep. So yep, man. Yeah, yeah. I could get in. That's a. Uh, I again. This is. I love, I love how we digress into the gaming <laughs> stuff, but I was thinking about this. I wanted to talk about it. It's pretty apropos. Baldur's Gate 3, for those of you who don't know, it's a Dungeons and Dragons based video game. It's a, the desktop rules version five or whatever. Yeah. I do don't, don't look at me. I'm not I'm not that deep into the <laughs> Odie will back me up on that. Uh anyway, so it's you know, a lot it, it's a gorgeous game. The 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 dialogue and the cutscenes are just amazing. But it's theater of the mind as well. So this is very what, much so, yeah. This is what uh has yeah. But yeah, Shadow Runner for the win. Shadow Heart for the win. I don't know. I have a love hate relationship. I with don't that know character. about that. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> that's the beauty of it. Know. You know, like <laughs> they spent good. Uh, all right, we're going way down. I know. No. Hole, Anyways, it's, it's it, very good. So about the gaming is that it it I find myself getting more attracted to this because I get I have to sit 
and I have to pause my brain and I have to focus. And what I mean by focus is I have to take myself out of situations and really think strategically and tactically. So it's it's nice. It's not just your normal everyday video game. It yeah, it's a lot like playing chess. Yeah. You have to be you have to, you know, a few steps forward uh thinking, I guess. I don't know how to, how yeah, to say that I mean, any better, but yeah. It's interesting, you know, that community of always thought they've um supported the very strategic thinking and being engaged and, uh, you know, putting team compositions and understanding tactics and how you're going about something. But there's just, because of that, there's like a thousand different ways to skin a cat mm -hmm. in the game. Mm -hmm. So it's like, mm -hmm. you know, one thing you can't do is just sleep through everything, but there's just so many different ways for stuff to unfold. Yeah. It's, it's fun it's to play. It's definitely not a run and gun type of thing. Yeah, right. No. <laughs> yeah. Mm -mm. All right. You will. You will die. <laughs> All right. No more game discussion. We're done. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> We're done. Okay. Okay. So today's uh, subject is the art of listening. This was. It was interesting because I had thought about this, and then Judy came back and she said, "Hey, I want to talk about this." And she she brought up some examples of what some things she was going through maybe with family members mm -hmm. and whatnot. And well, uh, plus it just, it was, it was one of those organic things that came about when I was talking with dad, we're sitting in a car for 12 hours. So we started talking about it and we talked about the, you know, the, the really deep down juicy bits of just having a good conversation with someone and how to, how to enact that, how to do that. Yeah. And where, so she she brought that and I was like, that's interesting coincidence because I I had thought about the same thing. And where this came from was, so the art of listening. What does that mean? Uh, after the show last week, you and I had an offline discussion mm -hmm. about some things that, that you were dealing with. And you were just talking. And what I what I found myself trying to do was what you know, I'm thinking to myself, what do I, what do I tell him? What does he, what does he need to hear? What does he want to hear? What, mm. you know, how do we, uh, do I give him a strategy or you're, my, you're putting on the cape. Yeah. Ready to save the how day. How do I, how do I fix this? Yeah. Right. So, so was I listening the whole time? I, I, I pulled myself back a couple of times and I'm like, Hey, just sit here and listen, you know? Uh, so I, I don't know. Do that's what I want to talk about today is, mm -hmm. How do you listen, Judy? Patrick, how do you listen? How do I listen? Do what are the rules that are in place for that? You know, are you supposed to have a conversation of, oh, Patrick, you're talking to me. Do you just want me to listen? <laughs> you know, how do you, what are the rules of engagement for that stuff? Because I think that's important to know mm -hmm. for, for us to hone our active listening skills it takes yeah. it takes energy from you listening if you're sitting there trying to problem solve uh, it it's dynamic you know i remember uh, a couple that a colleague of mine that i used to work with when he was talking about talking with his husband about this they had a ground rule of like if somebody comes up and is frustrated and is venting you know one of their first questions right out of the gate may seem very in informal or blunt was do you want comfort or do you want solutioning mm. because yeah. it also depends on the state of mind of, of the person you know because being analytical and in your head as much as you know you are and i am and you know even judy like there are times where they're like yeah i'm just running through the permutations and just understanding more options is definitely mm -hmm. more beneficial but there are times when it is more emotional based where I have to word salad everything out and I'm just literally sorting everything out on the table and I don't need you to add more stuff, you know, like just being there and holding that space for me to s start setting it out on the table is beneficial. So I, yeah, it goes both ways. And I think that's part of the art of the dialogue is learning to either read, uh, you know, there's we use visual cues a lot to mm -hmm. you know to read off of who who we're discussing with 
And it's the level of trust factor and engagement too. And if you're confused, then sometimes asking that question, do you want comfort or do you want solutioning is an appropriate question. It may seem rude or un unempathetic, but I, I couldn't think of anything more empathetic to ask at that point. Yeah. I think one of the, one of the things is just to be able to read the room, so to speak, you know, quote unquote, read the room. When you go into a conversation, if not everybody has the skills to do that, but when, if you do have the skills to do that, when you're having a conversation with somebody, read their emotions, read their body language, read, um, their, their responses and, and what they're, what they're really, really talking about. If they're just spouting off stuff, then most of the time they really just want to be heard. They don't, they just want to be validated. They want somebody to actually hear them talk and acknowledge them and say, you know what? I'm really sorry you had to go through that. Or wow, that is fantastic. Congratulations. You know, just something that says, I hear you and I validate you. Most of the time, that's what people want. If they want answers, then they'll probably say, well, what do you think? You know, and they'll, they'll push you, hopefully. If not, then you just have to see if, you know, ask that specific question, well, how did that make you feel? Or how did kind of guide them to their own answer? But not everybody has those tools to do that in a conversation. You're, but, uh, go ahead. But read the room is basically one of the things that I, I, I'm trying to teach myself to do. Yeah, I struggled with that a lot. And you're right, actively validating somebody or active mm -hmm. listening is validating what they said, either in a short summary. And that's not just to point out or mirror back, you know, mirroring is a very important thing for listening. You know, it shows you're engaged in the same space and then uh, confirming what they just said for active listening isn't just like, hey, this is what you just said. It's just it's a conversational uh, point where you're waving, you're like, okay, I'm processing this. I'm getting on the same page as you, you know, we're going down this journey together. And I think that's what part of that providing that space is on listening. And I would say that I struggled with that early. You say reading the room, because how many times have we talked here before where we're like, are they paying attention to me? Are they judging me? You know, when you walk into mm -hmm. a room and you, the glass frog, yeah, the glass frog, <laughs> your ego <laughs> goes bananas and you're thinking it all through the lens of yourself. Like, what are they saying about me? What are they doing this? And you're just waiting for it. Like you're literally building your environment to wait for cues about you. And so mm -hmm. uh, before the show, I talked about, I struggled early cause my mind was in overdrive. I thought conversation was a sport. I'm very verbose and like to articulate, be long winded and always seeking validation. I think it's a sport where I'm like on defense and I'm just waiting to intercept the right point. Oh my gosh, there's a quiet part. I'm jumping in. I'm taking over the conversation. <laughs> yeah. And I realize how off putting that can be a lot of times. Mm. You know, that is not active listening, that is not providing space from, for others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's sometimes it's it's wanting to be heard mm. for the sake of just wanting to be heard. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I also think that that blends into kind of the addict mentality because sometime in their life, this is not, you know, exactly every addict, but sometime in their life, they were not heard. They were not validated. So they turn to other things to, to self validate or, you know, make themselves feel more accepted. I do think that that does bleed into the addict mentality of not being, not being heard, not being validated at a young age. Yeah. I know that, that, you know, where some of the traits that I suffered from at a young age was not feeling like I was not being heard and not being validated for who I am. Even though I was a kid, I still knew, you know, kind of my own mind at certain points and to just be blown off and it sticks with you. I have, I have a, a story when I was a kid, I was about five, I'd say five or six years old. And I was with our babysitter and she was, you know, giving my sister and me a shower and trying to hurry us up to put us to bed. And I was trying to get conditioner out of my hair. So it's very minor, but I was trying to get conditioner out of my hair and I hadn't rinsed it all out. And I said, there's still some in my hair. And she says, no, there's not. It's, it's, it's supposed to feel like that. Hurry up, get out, get out. 
So I got out and I woke up the next day and I had greasy hair because I knew even at five years old that I didn't have all the conditioner out of my hair. Now that is a very minor, small story. I mean, it's so insignificant, but at 52 years old, I still, that still causes me to, to reflect upon that and still get a little bent out of shape that she didn't acknowledge me for who, for knowing my own self. Conversation. So, I mean, it's, yeah. Converse, you're absolutely right. Conversation is one of the first primary areas where definitely the addict mind, you know, we don't know how to validate self and we're always yes. seeking elsewhere. Conversation is just one of those mediums that happens very early at age. In fact, you can see, you know, um, well, kids with ADHD or, you know, just behavioral development stuff, you know, kids acting out. You know, pay attention to me. That's what I need, you know, because they don't have the tools to, to communicate. So, so I, I would wholly agree. Like conversation is one of the realms where, you know, it's really hard to develop that those skills to be able to sit and listen because the, the brain is so validation or ego driven just from the get go. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And I, I also think that building those conversational skills is an opportunity that's often missed by well for, for me in particular by my parents you know there's mm -hmm. i think there's a lot to be said about being able to sit down with your child especially at a young age and and have conversations mm -hmm. and see how that just let those conversations play out versus you know, having a dictatorship mm. style of parenting or just, you know, sh shut up. <laughs> yeah, you're just the, a kid. You, you're just a kid. You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, we as we've been talking about this, I've been thinking you know, what. When can we hone those skills? And it's for sure for sure it's a lifelong practice, but I think that it's it's honed during your youth. That's that's your social foundation. Versus, if you don't get that, like I did not, at home, then you, I ended up getting it from the playground with children that don't have good conversational skills, and then I was in the army. You know, fast forward to that. So, it wasn't until I got into my professional career, way late in my my, my time on this earth that I was, I started to, as I started going to leadership courses and, you know, how to influence people and how to have conversations and stuff that it started, I started to really, I came home and I told Judy, this was like nine, 10 years ago. I said, Hey, a lot of the stuff I'm learning in my professional life, I find that it benefits me a lot in my professional life too, because I personal, I'd, you mean person? Yeah. That I, <laughs> I missed out on a lot of the, uh, it's a social skill being able to talk and listen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I didn't start learning it until I was in older until I started reading and, and, and investing time in my own, my own self. And then one time I had a friend, uh, we were talking about astrology or no. Yeah. Astrology. What are the Zodiac signs? Anyway, we were talking about that and me and, and her fiance were the same sign. And, it just came across as, well, do you know, you guys are nothing alike except for this one thing. And I said, oh, what's that? She goes, you like to talk about yourself. And it just kind of brought me back to, wow, okay. She goes, yeah, it's not, you know, it's, it's a little disturbing because when we're in a conversation, you always bring it back to yourself and you always, you know, compare it to your own experiences and stuff. Well, yeah, we do that on our mind, but we don't always need to mm. express that. And plus, I was always trying to put myself forward instead of listening to everybody else and listening to what they were going through. It was very much ego driven. Me, 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 I, I, I. And it, that kind of set me back as well. So just made me think about that. And it altered my my direction with conversation. Mm. Yep. For me, it's definitely been having kids uh, has been a big change wow, for yeah. me because you're exactly right where it begins and it's, it's 
so hard to kind of walk through because we talked, I talked about active listening, you know, repeating back what you just heard to the speaker to acknowledge that, you know, you're getting there in the same space. Um, you know, with my son, I talked to you when we went to the Oktoberfest or whatever, and he, he saw the memorial and, you know, started playing with it and didn't respond to my first couple of like, hey, hands off type of thing. And so I had to not only like take him aside, but I, you know, a good effective thing is literally getting down on his level, mm -hmm. you know, and talking through that. And it's so tough with the younger kids sometimes because like, like you said, my parents were just like, you know, just why are you doing that? That's wrong. Just do it this way. And, you know, I'm finding myself like, you know, very similar. I understand their feelings. Like, why are my, why is my eight year old and six year old fighting over who opens the cereal box first? It's like, what the fuck is this about? It's like, it, it's a, I want to be like, it's a GD cereal box. Just pour it and be done with it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but you have to talk through and be like, okay, you know, like, and this is what I've talked about is frustrating for me sometimes when I'm like, I just want to wake up and have coffee. I don't want to go into a 15 minute dissertation of like why we respect each other's boundaries and, and, and trying to articulate, I feel, you know, seen when I open the cereal box, you know, I want to be, so you have to sit there and walk through those discussions, you know, as absurd as they may sound or like underdeveloped as they may be, like they, when they're getting upset and dealing with the emotions, like that tool of walking through those is what is being given to them. And you know what? It's, it's repetition. So there's a lot of days where, you know, we're always doing that, but you know, there's a few gyms that pop out that throughout the day where like they came through and like I, I remember once I was having a tough day and Flynn was like man dad I'm sorry to hear that you know would you like to would you like to play some video games with me or go build some Legos <laughs> and think about something else or you know talk to me about it and I was just like what who are you and, you know it's like, That's awesome didn't, didn't you just get done that is so cool to the seat and, you know in the bathroom and I got, it's like <laughs> all right Oh, out but, of the mouth of babes. That's awesome. Right. So it's just that you're absolutely right. It's that repetition. You know, I don't own the action of others. The best I can do is lead and model the way. And that's not me like trying to dictate to others. So what, that's a reminder for me. Like if I want to be heard, being a better listener is where I start. That's good. I like that. Yeah, for sure. And it, and it goes the other way too. We've, we're speaking of figuring out the social cues or how you set up the, the foundation of the conversation. The other one is to understand that you don't have to react always to situations, too. I think there's an expectation that some people have. I know a person that, like, when I show them something or, or have a conversation, they... they they always try to respond with something to the point where I've asked them in the past, I said, Hey, you know, you don't have to react. You could just not say anything. You can just look and just be here and be present. Mm -hmm. And I was, as I was thinking about that, I thought, man, that's tough for me to do. And it takes practice. I think that's, that's also something that comes with developing a little bit of stoicism which I think is important as well. Sometimes it's okay just to be quiet and not say anything. Yep. Yeah. You know, the this is middle way concept. Um, there's a difference between locking the emotions away. Right. And then mm -hmm. an appropriate time in place and setting to address them. Hence right? read just the room. In making sure to approach <laughs> them directly, right? Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, Odie, Odie says something in that vein exactly he says I, I had great listeners but sometimes I regret sharing later good friends listen and want to offer solutions but they always don't have the solutions and that makes them feel bad and helpless then I feel bad mm -hmm. for putting them in that position so more often than not I prefer to keep stuff to myself <laughs> so 
that, yeah, that's the other side of the spectrum too, is that, uh, you know, I, while I, I want to tell Judy something, but yeah, I don't, I don't want her to have to carry the burden or share any anxiety with me. So I'll just shut up and I'll just sit yeah. here and stew and, 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 you know, get toxic with something. And then it's like, well, what's, what's wrong, babe? What's going on? Nothing. Yeah, there's clearly something happening. Mm -hmm. So very strange that we don't, the, the easiest solution is just there. And that is to talk and for someone to understand how to listen properly. Mm. Yeah. But it's, I think doc, go ahead. go ahead. It seems cumbersome sometimes to, to talk about how we're supposed to talk. We, I'm guilty of wanting to seem like I know how to have the conversation and how to have the answers. Cause I heard someone say like, I, I really enjoy talking to John. I should have followed up with why? Well, <laughs> I want to know why. Is it because I don't say anything back or I'm just, or I don't know the answers or, you know, why do you enjoy talking with someone? If you could fill out a short survey yeah. afterwards, I would appreciate this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> please, please rate this conversation that we just had. I mean, there's other complex factors into it. You know, it, you know, when you find your own ilk or people, so to speak, you know, it's easier to have a high degree of trust in that safe space. Mm -hmm. um, and then other times, you know, you're just not everybody's cup of tea either. Right. And then, so it doesn't matter how you would approach the conversation there. They may take it in poorly at the same time too. So I wouldn't. That's the yeah. risk we have to take sometimes. Yeah. To it, be able to to be our um, our authentic self, as uh, Doctor Mate encourages us to be our, our authentic self, um, we just that's one of the things that we are going to run into is there may be a discord or um, there may be a bad reaction that comes back, um, and hopefully there isn't, but it's one of the risks we have to take sometimes. Right. Well, and it. And it kind of circles back to what we talked about last week. Where does it, where does it all sort of live and breed? Ego. Ego. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, one of the, one of the, I'm sorry, go ahead. It, it's a, uh, you know, how, if I, if I'm in this conversation, this is how I, I think I govern my talk with people, especially if I'm just getting to know them. It's, are we putting on a show? Are we? Or are we being our authentic self? More often than not, I think we're putting on a show. We are, our ego is driving all of that by, by selling ourselves. It's, it's our caveman mentality. Here's what I got to offer you. Here's what I can do for you in order. This is why you want me in your tribe. It's not. Yeah, hey, here's how good of a person I am that you want to be with me. It's, yeah. It's to the degree of trust you're absolutely right the, and that's what's confusing about conversation is because we'll we'll open up conversation with a low degree of trust and that's not saying i am distrustful i'm saying i open up conversation through uh theater and other politeness you know mm -hmm. all that weather today you know we have tons <laughs> social of niceties we have tons tons of scripted social niceties that we play by and that's almost like a wall right you know yeah. i can put this veneer up right but to for the art if we're talking about the art of conversation you know that that you don't really need a lot of active listening in that but as soon as coming somebody comes up is like you know like how you doing today living the dream every day yeah. you know <laughs> the time you walk in and that guy that you haven't had a lot of deep conversation with they're like yeah fuck man you know getting the divorce and you know car broke down today and like prior to that your your only conversation has been social niceties is in like it's like how do you how do you be a good listener in that right like, first response what? is hi man tmi <laughs> too right? much information whoa 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 back up <laughs> Right. But at the same time, you want to be able to like the fixer in me and the, in the past when it would be like, 
you know, like, okay, I guess this is what we're doing and either stay actively engaged or shut it out. Like you would say is just like, Oh, yep. We're not dealing with that fucking shit today. <laughs> you know, yeah. Um, be like, suck, Instead suck, you know, it wouldn't be that mean <laughs> about it, but you know, would throw up another social nicety to dismiss the conversation in a mm -hmm. short manner and leave verbal smoke bomb spike <laughs> run. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of how conversations yeah. go in society. Just like if I don't want to deal with it, it's like, oh, I got a text call thing. But OK, thanks. Bye. Yeah. And you're out. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Because you're absolutely right. There's that, you know, hey, how's it going? Can't complain. Oh, no one will listen if you did. <laughs> you know, this right. is this, like I've, I've mumbled. I've I've said, hey. Someone's asked me, how's it, how's it going? I'm like, I really can't complain. And then as they're speaking it, I'm doing like the breakfast club, like no one will listen. I'm like, I already knew it was going to come out of your mouth by just saying that. But so back to the art of it, there's also, there's a, there's a fine balance of that social interaction and having a conversation too. There's, I, I've given myself so much liberty and grace people are like hey how's it going john i'm like i'm an alcoholic i got mental health issues they're like jesus christ that's just <laughs> whoa, whoa. It's too much and they're like i don't the break there buddy <laughs> yeah too, too much for me to digest i had a, yeah. i ran into a guy at a store one day i, I think I, I forgot to tell you about this both of you i'm like hey how's it going nice day outside or whatever and he's like i'm still sober <laughs> i'm like what <laughs> um just yeah. a random conversation but yeah so it's those so now we're getting into the sociology of it versus active listening and how how do you have conversations so i judy and i have ran into some really interesting people by being able to have just a, a random probably a wholesale uh, showmanship conversation but injected with a little bit of uh, reality as well so it's mm -hmm. awareness and trust I will always go back to trust in a conversation if you truly trust a person and feel like this space is safe uh, you know mm -hmm. bringing those stuff up as a non sequitur you know like um, like if somebody could bring that up to me like if you were to come up to me and be like oh shit bad day today such and such happened you know like like if you came up to me just like right off the cuff and said that i feel comfortable enough in our relationship and trusted enough that i'm willing to have that conversation and if i don't have time for that or i'm previously engaged you know this is the part where it becomes hard because it's like if somebody says that you know i could just be like oh yeah john it's tuesday fucking sucks yeah or, you know yeah. like or you know like nobody's gonna listen to you anyway you know some i could throw up a social veneer to dismiss it mm -hmm. but ultimately for me to communicate that level of trust and be like john that sounds like some serious stuff i i would love to be able to either help or provide space to talk to you about it Unfortunately, I have a previous engagement that I too, but I would like to set aside time in the future or find space for it, right? You have to clearly mm -hmm. articulate your needs, wants, and desires. And that means I have to admit my failure right then to say, like, I can't be your superhero and I can't be your kicking post. Yeah. And that sucks. Cause you mm -hmm. you came, you know, if you address that to me, I'm like, wow. In my mind, this is all behind the scenes stuff, right? It's like, oh man, he trusted me enough to to say this. I gotta step up. I gotta be the hero, or I gotta like, I gotta be here. This is what we're doing. Yeah. And for me to like have to say, like, either I have a previous engagement, you know, this is the hard part to struggle with life, you know, navigating these decisions and clearly articulating the emotion that it's pulling within and say like, John, I care about you a lot. And this conversation is really important to me. And I want to be able to be an active listener, but I can't do that right now. God, that would make me feel like shit though. But that's, but that's a you thing. I know that would really well, hurt my feel. That would make it that when you're saying that, as I was like thinking, if I had Patrick, I need to talk to you about something. And if you gave me that response, I would feel overwhelmed. But you also 
I also trust our situation that, you know, you're not, you're not doing that to me. Like when we're in passing or like, I'm, I'm like shuttling the kids off to the soccer game either. You have, you, you know how to read the room in our relationship, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know how to mm-hmm. say like, you know, when, and when is a good time to bring these things up and when is not a good time to bring these things up. Right. Like when we're mm-hmm. running and I can't like run away from you, you're like, all right, <laughs> I'm going to cork one open now. Yeah. Patrick, <laughs> he stuck are, with me for another hour. He's like <laughs> two minutes faster. That's what right. are you doing? Why are you trying to run away? <laughs> <laughs> so I have, I have a question for you both. Well, real, real what quick, do babe. you do? Real oh, quick, go ahead. That's, so I got to, I'm going to ponder that later too. I got to, I got to put that in my bag of shit. I got to think about at two o'clock <laughs> in the morning is that I don't know. I don't know. I don't like that response. I don't, I got to figure that out. That's a me thing for sure. But if I was like Patrick I, or Judy, I got to talk to you about something. You're like, I hate, I really want to have this conversation with you, but I've, I've got to, I am having a heart attack, so I got to get to the ER. I'd be like, you don't have time for me. Yeah, I, I really got to digest it. It's a, yeah, interesting. Go ahead. Sorry, babe. So I had I had a question. What? How would you approach a situation when there should be a trust issue between you and the other person? Like the other person is a relative of yours or, well, yeah, like a relative of yours or a good friend of yours. And you know that there's that that drop in dialogue. There's there's the there's not going to be a good give and take in that conversation. How how do you approach that? Those are tough because you and I were discussing this the other day, and mm-hmm. so there's a there's a, there's a multifaceted answer to that, and I'll try to keep it succinct. And that is, are you wanting to address a behavior that someone has instilled in their overall architecture for their entire lives? Or are you wanting to open up that line of communication and say, hey, I would like to have more heartfelt discussions with you, but Mm -hmm. I feel like it's just a one-way street. And where Judy's going with this is that I, I intentionally try not to do this because it bugs me so much. And that is, Patrick, tell me uh, you had a good run today. I had a, I didn't. I had a great run today. Uh, hold on. <laughs> uh, my nice. run was better. Uh, let, one me, ups let, me tell you, let me tell mm-hmm. you about way back in 1992. Here's what I did. The one upper, the 400 yes. percenter. Those are the, those, yes. are the con- those are the conversationists that are tough. And Mm-hmm. But so how, how do you, I guess that's what Judy's asking is how do you approach that? I want, I would like, because <laughs> if someone were to say to me, I don't know, well, I don't know. I don't want to make it about me, but it, it's. Uh, well, it doesn't, it doesn't validate what I just said. Like if I was to say that I had a good run or I had a good exercise or my garden is doing fantastic. There's no validation of what I said. It's immediately turned back to, well, well, mine is so much better or mine is so much worse. Right. It's always, it's their ego, I guess, again. So, or that person, that person or persons just are not secure enough in themselves that they need to make sure everybody else, <laughs> did I hit it on the nose? <laughs> they, they, they're not secure enough in themselves and they're, they want to make sure that everybody knows their, their two cents has been heard. So, but before you answer Patrick, let's go back to Judy's ask originally was, how do you approach this? Of how do you, how do you mm-hmm. get, how do you ask for a dialogue adjustment moving forward? Yes. So my answer to this is I want to divide this out into two pieces. One part is um, addressing uh, the trust factor with longstanding relationships. And then the other is a very specific type, which is the uh, one upper, the 400 percenters I call, because that's a very distinct trait in conversation from what we were talking about. And it's not yeah. uniquely tied to uh, the longstanding relationship. First and foremost, uh, the, there's a quote that runs in my mind that got thrown around wrongly, and it's always like, blood is thicker than water. 
you know, mm-hmm. and people would mm-hmm. use that to relate family. Like, because we're family, we have a high degree of trust. Just because you know yeah. somebody for a long time does not mean trust is inherently high. I'm no. going to be honest about that. And old relationship, old relationships, especially with family, are just littered and buried with those behavioral trip minds. I don't know uh, how many times I feel like I can say, like, I've done a lot of work. I'm an active listener and I, you know, show up professionally and I show up for my kids. And then there are just some people I get around where it just like my my OS just rewrites itself to like an older version really quick. And and like 15 minutes in the conversation, I'm like, what the fuck just happened? What? How did we get here again? So easy. Yeah. Yeah. So that's addressing behaviors. And the best way for me to do that is boundaries always set the boundaries Mm. and that's clearly articulating your needs wants and desires hey it's really going to be hard for me to set an example without having some very personal items in there but it's like hey i would love to do this activity with you but often when we engage in this you know this is where speaking from the eye comes in very handy like i feel X, Y, I feel this way when, when you have this behavior. So in order for this action to happen, you know, and then you set out your boundaries, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And then you have to be firm on them too. So this doesn't mean harsh or judgmental. Like when, when they cross that line or, and, and are eliciting a specific behavior from you, you have to say, you know, thanks. I set this boundary, you know, it's going to be some time before we can engage again or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Or do I, I agree. To, yeah. And it's hard. You know, this is why, yeah. you know, a good tool for addicts on especially old relationships, there's there there is real cause for no, no contact or low contact for certain parties to be in the best benefit. Mm. You know, yeah. because yeah. they need to build those tools to do so. And they also need to build themselves up too, because right. they could be in a relationship where that other that other person just keeps, you know, hammering them down. And for them to grow as an adult, they need to distance themselves from that. Right, and you know the uh, in reference to uh, the oh, I just forgot the the one up for the four percent or the triangle, the drama triangle. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, the drama. Tri- yeah, a victim. Yeah. Rescuer. You know, rescuer and the persecutor. Um, the behaviors that come out, you know, if somebody's spent a lot of work of trying to climb out of that victim role, it's amazing. Like you put them around uh, old people in the old roles from the persecutor or the martyr mm-hmm. or whatever. It's amazing. That's why I was saying it's like a, a tripwire. Just those old feelings co- just come back up. And I mean, it's, it's, those are long behaviors. So again, I will just reiterate setting boundaries with that and having the the awareness to be able to do so is one of the the healthiest, healthiest ways to approach that. And the second part is, uh, the one up her or the 400 percenter. And (laughs) I call it the 400 percenter because it's always like, you know, I, I had friends and, relatives there were a couple that you know it felt like every time that he told a story you know their immediately r- response was one very similar mm-hmm. where it was either embellished and or like you know oh you, you ran i did i did twice that distance at twice the speed right and it's uh-huh. and it's exactly to your point judy they you hit it right on the nose and i don't you know we can talk about it more but i think it is just a direct reflection of like very someone that uh, interrupts conversation a lot that was me um that i was always seeking for a point to be validated because i didn't know how to validate myself the one upper is i don't know how to validate myself this person is seeking it you know it's it's like the first in line like if i'm giving out prizes for being fast at running you know, mm-hmm. that's like, oh my gosh, I'm being validated for a quick runner. You know, the competition is like, I want to be the first. When I'm handing out validation, when somebody sees, oh, you're training for a marathon, John? Good for you. And somebody goes, 
well, what the fuck? I trained for a full marathon, not a half marathon. What about me? Mm -hmm. What about Mm -hmm. me? Where is my validation if we're handing out validation on running? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I have more sympathy for those, but that's, that is a very, it, as, as far as the art of conversation goes, that is a very difficult one for me to have because it reminds me of, uh, if you've ever tried to talk, um, one ground rule of AA is you don't show up drunk. Like if you, if you're looking to get sober, like there are many groups that are just like, look, you know, yes, we want to be here. We want to be able to help, but you can't, you, you gotta be off the booze for 24 hours or a certain time frame, right? Like mm-hmm. you got, you gotta put in at least that level of engagement. That's same with the the four hundred percent. Hey, like I I want to like, you know, this is the boundaries for those people. Like, I want like you're a dear friend. I want to have the conversations that are very deep and meaningful. But whenever I bring up a certain item that you feel incumbent upon yourself to like either one up or like step over that, I feel like you're directly invalidating me to supersede yourself. Yeah. You know, there's the answer, babe. Easy. Yeah. And the last, the, the unfortunately for me, the, the last thing I want to do is have a conversation with that person. Yeah. Because immediately, cause, immediately cause, I shut down. Because if you say it like that and they don't have the tools, fuck you. You're yeah. not a, you're not a good runner. I'm just letting you know I'm better. If you need advice, come, you know, like it's like that. If, if you hit, if you hit a weakness like that directly on the nose, like you do it to me right now, you know, what do I do? Shut down, turn inward or yeah. lash out. Mm-hmm. So again, art of conversation of being able to bring up that boundary, but you can't, this is the, the suck ass part about conversation. Like you have to clearly articulate your needs, wants and desires and set that boundary clearly. And it may mm-hmm. suck sometimes. Yeah. Because, and you know what may happen because of that? The person might not engage in the relationship afterwards. But guess what? That's not a fucking you problem. That's a them problem. Yeah. Yeah. O- Odie made sort of the, sa- the comment around that vein. Not everyone appreciates uh, when you're honest with them. But at the same time, they are not okay with you being dishonest. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Very much so. And it's your fault that's, either that's way. Good one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a good. That's no matter good, what, it's your fault. <laughs> yeah, that's a good uh, perspective from the victim, right? If you bring it up, mm-hmm. you know, like, shame on you for trying to call me out. And you're like, no, I'm just trying to let you know this is how I feel. And, you know, to negotiate, I would love to hear about your exploits during running or, you know, uh, how they may be similar, or, you know. Like, that's the part of the conversation that I'm looking for. Oh, oh, you ran a marathon? What did you feel that was the most difficult part? Or, you know, Mm -hmm. how did you feel during that? Like, open that as a gateway. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I was just thinking, too, that 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 gateway cue is, uh, especially if you run into someone that has similar interests or, or conditions or whatever, and that is, oh, just a quick beat. Excuse me, I just burped. Just a quick, <laughs> just a quick beat of, oh, I I also have that interest, but let me hear more about yours. Then it turns mm-hmm. in. Then all this man. Then talk about an energizing conversation of oh yeah yeah. Dang. That's a that's, good. That's a good back and forth. That's how Patrick and I first met <laughs> on the sidewalk. He's like, I've been sober for eighteen months. I'm like, I'm a fucking alcoholic too, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard the best way to like get in somebody's head or get them to talk about themselves. Uh, I was like, a, like either some weird dating advice or something. Be like, oh, you're an an, an investment banker. I heard that the regulations aren't, aren't you know are just creating too much havoc and they're just w- worthless. You know, and like just it's like. Spelling on the internet. The best way to figure out if a word's spelled wrong is directly spelled wrong. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right? And they'll correct you. Yeah. If you go and if you ask somebody what one of their likes is or if they're commenting on their better runner, like you're oh oh, you really are the biggest Star Trek fan? Well, what did Luke Skywalker say at the end of this? You know, and they're just like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I also think um another 
another thing that we we've discussed we've we've hit on multiple times is is being present um in a conversation because there's conversations if they're not and i hate to say this if if they're not interesting my mind starts to wander off to what i need to do to, later on today and what i need my, my grocery list and other and, you know and being i think which is something I need to work on being a good conversationalist is being present in that conversation. How do you be Cause present? then, huh? How, how, how do, do you like to practice being present? Uh, turning off the, the other dialogue that's going on in my head and focusing exactly on what that person is saying yeah. and really, really hearing what they're saying. For me, um, that manifests in behavioral cues, meaning uh, turning to face them, Right. Squaring mm -hmm. up, looking in the eye, oh, yeah. not fidgeting um, stuff that I've learned that I do and that my kids have picked up on. And so when they are ready to not listen, you know, you can they, tell they, I'm like looking <laughs> in the mirror. I'm like, where did where did you learn that? And they're like, you, I learned it by watching you. <laughs> oh, that's the hide in the pot commercial. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah. Hey, real quick, I want to uh, acknowledge someone on the uh, the podcast live uh, radio show. His name is Big Chief Thunderlung. He uh, he said he, he was in Paris Island in '93 with a Lund. Uh, well, hey, thank you for joining the show, there, Big Chief Thunderlung. Uh, no, I was in the I army. I love that name. Yeah, that's awesome. I was in the <laughs> army in '93. Thank you for your service. But uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you learn that from? Yeah, but yeah, that, but I think. That's, go ahead, Ben. I think that um, for for us to really grow as people, we need to learn to have really good communication skills. That's a big, you know, a neon sign for for me that I am working on every day is to have to be a good communicator to be able to diplomatically as my father says diplomatically tell somebody to go to hell so they enjoy the trip <laughs> no. I love that one. So, <laughs> but that's that's another killinism so um but just to be a good to be a good conversationalist to be present to be in the conversation to know to read the room and and realize you know does this person really just need to vent and can i just be here to let them vent and not take any of their stuff personally towards myself and you know worry about it but just to be a listening ear for that person or is this person actually seeking advice or a, a path i think that's something i'm i'm consciously working on I, as I, I get older you're absolutely right, Judy, just that, that being present. Um, in IT, I prided myself on putting on the cape and fixing everything that was wrong. But I realized in customer service, it wasn't being like, oh, yeah, you filled out that form wrong. No wonder it didn't get sent in. I fixed it for you. You're welcome. You know, like, <laughs> uh, what is that, the, the Nick Burns on Saturday Night Live? Yeah. Move. I'll fix it. You know, like, <laughs> you're doing it wrong. Um, meeting the customer where they're at is what I'd call that. And then the conversation is the same concept, meeting the person where they're at and providing space for them to build that trust. And so you can have those deeper conversations is important. So with the customers, it was like, oh man, that was, you know, I understand there's a lot of information out there and really confusing. I would take that feedback and, you know, we'll work on, you know, that became an item for development. Like that gave my teams the best success. Oh, that form was confusing. Yeah. We're going to pass this on to UX and develop it and like, you know, making it an ease of entry for the customer. Right. Or just validating them. Like they're just like upset about something. Oh man, I understand that's really frustrating. You know, we're here to work through it. It's not perfect, but you know, just knowing that we'll be there. Different customers just require different responses, even though that they may have the same problem, same yeah. with conversations. And it begins with us, you know, meaning like we didn't learn to validate ourselves. So we were constantly seeking that all the time, trampling over conversations, walking through it, doing our own 400% or seeking, just seeking, seeking, seeking. Mm -hmm. Now, when we show up in a conversation, you know, it took forever for us to develop the dialogue to validate ourselves. And that meant from like yeah. 
forming these weird emotions into like maybe some grunts and a few words into like complete <laughs> sentences. I'm feeling this mm -hmm. way about this. And now, you know, that took energy to get from that state of feeling to state of understanding. Mm -hmm. Very much so. Yeah. Now we have to, you know, get to be able to show up and it is harder with others because we don't get to hear their internal dialogue. But mm -hmm. at the same time, you know, like going from <laughs> just trying to understand where myself is at is a fucking journey some days. And when somebody shows up on a different la wavelength, you know, it's that is a, a fucking, you know, it can either send me off the rails or rock my world. But I think that's ultimately one of the best exercises to do and to get out of our own head is to like give ourselves the grace and patience to be like, this person's obviously on a different place, you know, mm -hmm. can I begin to understand that or, you know, can I provide space for them to either grow that trust or, you know, like, you know, how, how can I show up as the best Patrick right now? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. And part of that means like, all right, Patrick, shut the fuck up. This is how you're showing up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's and it's listen. amazing the parallels between uh customer service and good communication. <laughs> right. Good good customer service and good communication. For sure. Guys, it's eleven o'clock. That was quick. I know. <laughs> Here we we I told you this was a juicy topic. Yeah. <laughs> Are we gonna put a bow on this one? <laughs> Did we get through all the points? Are there any uh, items that you know you feel no. like that we missed? Uh, I think we hit them pretty much on the head. I was just reading my notes and it, we've, we've, we've covered all of them. Good. For the all most right. part. I know you got stuff going on, Patrick. I need to eat, man. I, we burned the, uh, was an average of 1300 calories on the eight mile run. Oh yeah. You, you're selling that brisket to me. Yes. You gotta get some of that. We got a little oh, bit of burnt yum, ends. Oh, the yummy in my tummy. 20 hour brisket, 20 hours on the smoker, man. And it was delicious. The, the flat got a little bit dry, but it's all right. Um, Did you want to do the questions? E yes. So go ahead, babe. Oh, okay. So what I was thinking is that any of our listeners that are out there, I'm sure have one or two questions. <laughs> and if they wanted to submit those questions to us, we could uh, answer them on, on the air. Yeah. Not just questions, but, you know, topics too, you know, if there's any yeah, topics. In there comments and if you could spend five minutes on this survey afterwards i'm just kidding guys <laughs> i'm not gonna ask you to do that but you know we love to hear from you so just you know mm -hmm. feel feel free to throw the questions in or prompts you know yeah we love the interaction we want to be the better listeners too that's right exactly yep okay let's wrap right. it up so again thank you for your support if you're listening to this uh on podbean live or through your favorite podcast app, please take a moment and go to youtube.com forward slash at sober mind and subscribe. And hit that subscribe button. Yes, it'll help us out. Uh, it'll help us out big time. Next steps are we got to put our heads together and talk about how we're going to start to build out the studio down in the in the basement. And oh, so we so, so that way we could get all three of us together and in the same room. In the same room. As a reminder, <laughs> Judy is here in this house. She's just around the corner in a different room. Okay. That is it. That was a fantastic show. Uh, yes. Thank you, guys. That was yep. awesome. Yep. Let, let's wrap it up. I keep wanting to talk about stuff, but we're, we're going we're gonna to call it. If you or someone you know is struggling with mental health, please contact the Suicide and Crisis Hotline at 988. Also, if you need help with addiction recovery for yourself or someone you know, please check out Al-Anon. Be kind to yourself. Be patient with yourself. You are loved. All right. Yes, be kind to yourself. Be patient. Give yourself some grace mm -hmm. while you're going Most through definitely. your mental health journey. Yes. All right, everybody, thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you guys next time. See ya. Bye. <laughs>